Hey watchers, how are you doing? We're just heading back from a beautiful day at the beach where we love to take a dip in the crystal clear water and my daughter asked me about how a web app is actually working. And then I thought about the corresponding system of the hermit crab and the snail shell. So we found a few snail shells on the beach and I was trying to explain uh, the system of classes and object in object oriented programming. And I think, uh, I thought, let's give it a go. So watch, listen and learn. Picture is worth a thousand words. Here today a snail shell represents a class and a bunch of hermit crabs represent objects. No doubt one class can have multiple objects. Like in the real world, a snail shell can accommodate many different inhabitants, but temporarily delayed. The program will have a memory for each connection, which also means data commitment. Why am I telling you a story about shells and crabs? Let me explain from the beginning. A basic principle between cooperating parts in programming is the close relationship between a class and their objects. A principle we do come across in real life quite often without really thinking about it or recognizing the importance. The hermit crab has developed a long tail to grab snail shells to use as a temporary home. Here a class has a number of attributes, which define the state of the object to come. In the real world these attributes describe the objects in detail. The state represents things an object has as properties, the behavior represents things an object can do. This is exactly like a to-do list. In coding terms our snail shell represents a class. Imagine the snail shell is just like a harbor, a source for all related objects to come in the future. Like a furnished flat, you are planning to move in. Everything you need to live should be provided. A class is a starting off point, a building plan enabling us to produce objects that have their own values. Let's get started with a simple line of code. Here it is. I haven't introduced our class snail shell yet in order to allocate some space memory to be precise we have to build an object of that class snail shell let us create a number of objects it is expected to have specific name to identify and access each object clearly you can build as many objects from one class as you like the snail shell is the blueprint for many hermit crabs each hermit crab is an instance of a snail shell instantiating an object is like a trace in the sand, like a handle that belongs to the object. Now we can see our to-do list from earlier, which we generated the moment we created the class. Remember the line drawn and sketched into the sand between the snail shell and the hermit crab? There is a connection which acts like a trail, a traceable thread, a data commitment between objects and the class. My teaching approach is for everybody from 3 to 99 inclusively. I will explain some basic but complex programming concepts with real world phenomena. My aim is here to make basic knowledge of computer science accessible for most people, even without a specific background in informatics or IT. Understanding programming through real world scenarios, introducing philosophy, botany, biology into teaching how to code. 